I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Dawncraft. So last episode, we ended up getting ourselves a pretty awesome item, I will have to say. I mean, honestly, the Nimbus 2000, aka the Flying Broomstick, is, is just such a, a tremendous item here. I, being able to fly is quite nice, but being able to survive, I think, is much better. And today survivability is going to be on the forefront and i'm working on getting myself some shelves set up uh and working on some new bookshelves to upgrade our enchanting system because at the moment it's pretty bad it's a pretty bad enchanting setup there's there's nothing there anymore because i took all the shelves and uh we're gonna use these shelves last episode we kind of prepped up a few things like regeneration potions in preparation to make hell shelves yes i can now kind of craft hell shelves and i think a few of them is going to work i believe we can still get away with 14 or 15 of them yeah 15 for right now i think would be a pretty good number now i was looking through this mess of uh, enchanted stuff in the quest book and noticed that this thing is actually something that we can make even though it is like one of the final tier reflections which we'll talk about here in a second we can technically make it because we can make purper. We do have chorus fruit. We did get lucky and got chorus fruit. Um, now, Gilded Blackstone, we're going to have to mine that with uh, Silk Touch. I do have Silk Touch. But we also need these shelves and all that stuff. But for right now, I think the main goal is to just get this base shelf set up. Now, my ultimate goal is going to hopefully get an enchanted library set up. This thing is pretty expensive to get going. But once we have it, oh, how our woes of enchanted books will go away because I can store them all inside of this thing. And that would be so much better than our current system of just putting them in chests and trying to find them. Um, because I can actually farm enchants, believe it or not. That mob farm that I built a couple of episodes ago, I can just chill out up there and the bad mobs spawn. And yeah, you can just kill them for the books and they just keep making books and books and books. It's quite nice, actually. You have to kill them by hand, though, to do that. But let's get our shelves put in. So at the moment, if we put these in the same way that we had things set up before, we're going to have to worry about Eterna, Quanta, and Arcana. Now, at the moment, this does not produce any of the Arcana, which is kind of a problem, right? It's kind of a bit of a uh, an issue. Um, I think normal bookshelves, however, they do give us a little bit more. And I don't know if this actually works going any taller than this, but I do know bookshelves going all the way around actually does something. Um, so we do have a pick in here and we can see currently what our levels are by looking at the, the shelf. And these are not adding anything to this whole setup. Um, but we do have 22.5, it looks like on here, and then 37 Quanta. So 25 Eterna and Quanta. Now to be able to make uh, this Enchanted Library, we need an infused health shelves. So this requires, as it says right here, at least 22.5, and then it needs at least 30% quanta. And we are actually managing that. So all I need to do now is just make more hell shelves. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we should be able to do, we have a few more blaze rods. I need to make four and infuse four of these in order to get this made. So honestly, I think adding these Eterna bookshelves right here definitely are working. Now, at the point, we should be able to put it in and get infusion, but we do need 45 levels. That's kind of a lot of levels, but we do have several ways of farming that. Of course, killing blaze is a great way in the nether, but also farming the stuff from our Drigme. And I do have even more levels stored inside chests inside. So I can consume these and we can get ourselves pretty close to 45. But there's actually another thing I want to get set up that should help us with enchanting overall. And that is a backpack upgrade that we can now afford. Now, after trading with a couple of clerics, we can get ourselves a couple of bottles of enchanting. This is also another way to get experience, but it's going to cost you a lot of emeralds to do that. Um, another cool thing about this, these guys actually trade for these elixir pieces. And those are quite powerful, actually, and uh, definitely help you uh, progress in this pack. But anyways, enough enough with that. Um, I've crafted up the advanced pump upgrade in a tank. And so now 
if we craft ourselves some Eyes of Ender, which looks so weird with this texture pack, we can then make ourselves an experience pump, along with a tank as well. And inside of our bag, when we put this in here, I believe it actually shortens our actual storage a little bit, but that's okay. We don't really need too, too much, but we can do this now. And notice right here, it is now storing levels and you can set, you can tell it to do a few things. It says uh, levels at which the pump stops. Um, and uh, we can tell it how many levels to keep on us at one time. You can see right there, it is at 33. And there's a lot of interesting settings that we can do. We can take levels, take all experience. It'll store it. There's all kinds of stuff. You can even repair items with mending with this. It's uh, pretty cool. So what I should be able to do to control this a little bit is set this to 45. And that will make sure that we always have a max of 45 levels. So we're not wasting any experience when we do enchanting. There is some weird enchanting mechanics that kind of, you know, come into play here. Um, and I think we can expand this later on by making some uh, stack upgrades. I, I think stack upgrades will work. I could be wrong on how to increase the tank size as a tank doesn't really seem to hold all that much. So I just crafted the stack upgrade tier one and yes, it does increase the tank size. Uh, which is really nice. So it does more than just stack items. It also increases our tank. So let's hopefully put this bad boy to work. And uh, yes, we should be able to now store a ton more experience. I don't know if like crafting this into a larger pile actually does anything, but I will take all of the experience, open the backpack, and right here it will say 45 levels is what it will extract. So if I give myself more than 45, you can see, it should keep me right at 45 and uh, we shouldn't get any more and it's going to store the rest into the backpack. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. And this is going to allow me to do some infusion. So this will infuse this shelf. There we go. And we have our first infused shelf. Now I'm going to need four more of these. And you can see it took two levels um, and I do have plenty more of the experience stored away. Now mining the 32 obsidian that I'm going to need in order to craft this thing, man, that's gonna be the pain. So now after that tedious grind, we now have some really interesting looking ender chests. All right, and I should now be able to combine all those things into an enchantment library. And this thing is magnificent. Ah, this is where magic is made. And uh, I'm going to place it right here because that's where I want to place it. And that means all of my enchanted books that I now have can come along with me and we can now sort them all. Oh, it's going to be so nice. As you can see, all of them getting put in here. All the books get stored away. And anytime we want to pull out multiple enchant er, enchantments, we can all slap them on just like this pull them back out, and then put them back in, and we don't have to worry about it. Oh, how life is easy now. Now that we have that made, let's focus on upgrading our enchanting hell shelf system and making it a little bit better. Now, what we need to do is actually infuse these as many as we can so we can get some arcana. This, after we've made the infused hell shelf, we can then combine it with some glowstone and make ourselves this the glowing hell shelf. This is the one to go for as you get Eterna, Quanta, and you get Arcana. All of those things are going to be helpful. Quanta is the thing that makes it a little bit unstable. It allows you to get curses. So as much of that as we can mitigate, the better, um, but it is still going to be there regardless at this current level. So something we'll just have to deal with. Now, thankfully, as far as enchanting goes, well, our beautiful cleric over here that hasn't gone mad yet, thankfully, uh, sells us lapis and also glowstone blocks. So pretty much everything we could want, this guy is actually selling in regards to apotheosis. Oh boy, this is going to be so nice. Whisper from the depths. Look at that. But it is going to be good because at the moment we have no arcana and that is going to give us nicer enchants, basically. And so now we have four, but the goal is to, of course, get this to its maximum that we can get with these particular shelves. Now, be careful when doing this because uh, once you get too many of these going, 
you're going to run into a little bit of a problem. Um, so at the moment I have a couple of these shelves, but I've got to balance this out. So right now, if I put this in, it's going to be 46 for infusion. We don't want it to be 46. So I'm going to take away a couple of shelves and see if we can still get infusion. We cannot. So we're going to, I think, have to deal with 46 for right now. Uh, now that I have better shelves in, maybe. I, I don't know. Let, actually, let's take this. This is an infused hell shelf. And I'm, I'm going to have to craft a few things up. Maybe I can get away with this. So I believe it's like this. All right. Well, let's place this one down and let's see. It is going to keep costing more and more, and I don't want it to do that. I still want to be able to infuse, but I don't want it to keep costing more. Can we infuse that? No. So, yep, 46. So, it's going to probably fluctuate anywhere, anywhere between 45, 40, and 47. Now that I have everything set up, well, it's almost set up. I did place some candles. This adds 1.25% uh, Eterna, or Arcana to this, and... Um, I went ahead and just replaced the rest with Eterna shelves. Uh, we can get a max of 15 on these only, uh, whereas the other shelves, they do give you two, but they also give you Quanta, and I want to limit the amount of Quanta uh, that we have on here to kind of limit the amount of curses. I mean, it kind of doesn't matter too, too much because we're not going to be directly enchanting uh, every time. Like, we're not going to always be directly enchanting tools, but we can. We can totally try to directly enchant. Uh, but there are some books from Apotheosis, that allow us to specify specifically what we want to enchant, such as the Tomes of Weaponry. So let's test one of these out. Let's take the Tome of Miners and we can put this in here. Now, I don't know if this applies multiple enchants to the single book. It might. It's going to be hard for me to know without doing it. Oh, it does. So this gives us Fortune 3, Unbreaking, oh my gosh, and Miner's Favor all in one. So it can do multiple things as if it's like enchanting a tool. So that's perfect. And then this book can just be stored. So instead of getting curses and stuff and implying curses onto your weapons, it's probably best to do it this way. That way you store those enchants into here. Ah, yes, yes. And avoid the chance of getting those curses that come from that high quanta. Now that I have this set up, oh my gosh. I'm about to do something that is going to make getting experience super easy, especially now that I have a mob farm up in the sky that just mobs just drop from. Oh, we can do so many things with the mods that are in here. First things first is to make knowledge. We are going to be making ourselves knowledge. You see this Lamborghini behind me? No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, we're going to be making knowledge too and putting it into a charm. And uh, that means we can get bonus experience so the way knowledge works it's from apotheosis by the way if i can spell knowledge that just goes to show how much knowledge i have but potions of ancient knowledge you can see it right here um it doesn't explicitly say exactly what it does but i think the charm does it tells you here when activated in the inventory it does not but i do know what knowledge does it does boost your experience gains um, which is quite nice. Now, we want it to be Knowledge 2, which is going to be just Bottles of Enchanting. And I get the, I got these off of my Cleric. Um, so quite easy to get the hands on this and to get this going. I do have plenty of Blaze Rods. And uh, once we get this rolling, it's going to be just the constant back and forth of getting experience, enchanting, getting more enchants and more enchants and making things incredibly powerful. That's... That is the game changer. This episode is hopefully going to be that game changer. So there we go. Now we have knowledge too, but it doesn't stop there. I'm going to be building a special book from the enchants that we currently have that we've gotten uh, already. And we can actually put the sword in here or we we're supposed to be able to. If we put this sword in here, for some reason it bugs out. So I put this in there and now it shows. Um, but we can put some things on here. For example, Scavenger. We can put Scavenger on there and Knowledge of the Ages. And Knowledge of the Ages is going to convert the mob drops into experience. And so all of this combined with the Scavenger re-rolling the, the loot and dropping twice the loot table, 
this is going to produce a lot of XP, I'm hoping. So let's test this out. Well, I'm gonna put looting three on here, scavenger, knowledge of the ages, and unbreaking three on here. I don't need it to do a lot of damage because our mob farm already drops the mobs way down. And then once we get more enchants and get more unbreaking, I should be able to, actually we might have unbreaking already here. Do I have enough for unbreaking three? I could technically put another unbreaking on there. We're gonna get more enchants anyways, so might as well enchant as high as I possibly can. And let's put a high level of, of unbreaking on this. Actually, let's check our bag. Let's take a couple of levels here. This is so nice. So very nice. Oh, and we can put unbreaking on that. Now that has a really high unbreaking level. So mobs are already dropping. And let's just see, that was seven levels. Seven levels. Oh boy, undead army is approaching. Well, I can't handle that. By the way, these little creepers don't seem to like actually blow up the area, but look how much, look at me levels we're already gaining. Oh, this is crazy. I wonder if the undead army is gonna spawn in here and drop down. That'd be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Oh, look, there's a balloon. What is up with the balloon? It like literally has shielding or something. Oh. <laughs> this is also a way we can farm the balloons. Just look at, I mean, this is just crazy though. Like how many levels we're gaining from this? We already have 31. Oh my gosh. And I probably want to make sure my backpack is pumping experience from player. It, I think once it goes over the 47, it will start doing that. So yeah, we can lower this down. We don't want any more than the 30 levels. Everything else I want to go in there. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous how much experience though it is actually producing. And I haven't even turned on my knowledge charm. Oh boy, that's even more. That was so many levels. Whoa! <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is nice. So I had to stand at the mob farm for like no time at all. And now we have basically two full levels set up worth of experience like i'm I, like a lot of experience and i've made up some of the books and so i should be able to put these in and get all of like the max enchants for our main set of gear this is just this is too nice and this was of course the first enchant that happened on that book what even fire protection five protection five feather falling and depth strider at its max. Oh my God. That's just insane enchants happening on these things. That was an insane roll right there. It just in, in, a crazy roll. Like that's a crazy roll too. All of these things are, are sh shaping up to be quite nice. Holy smokes. Yeah, I feel like this episode is honestly turned into let's become incredibly OP episode because <laughs> that's what it feels like at this point. I'm about to, uh, yeah, get some gear crafted up. Now I do have currently my main gear right here, but it's already broken and I've repaired it a few times and the cost gets really high when you do that. And I'm sure I'll keep it for later uses as I can always just wipe it and then restart. Uh, but we still would have to repair it and it's kind of a pain. So how about a fresh start? Uh, a lot of this is gear that I've actually found. Also included in that, we do have our pick here um, that we're, we're gonna enchant. But I do have some materials here. I have a few of the epic arcade sands that we've gotten thus far. And I feel like reforging this would be a good idea. Can you reforge? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we looks like we can get at least a socket. And so this right here, explosive damage taken is reduced by five. When attacked, gain resistance two. That'd be pretty nice. And this also ignores a bunch of durability. However, it does, a, it does come with negative 22% total entity gravity. I don't know if that makes us float higher or that uh, makes us not be able to jump. Uh, both of those sound incredibly awful. Aha, uh -huh. so in the book, it explains gravity a little bit weird, uh, but gravity is how fast you fall down in blocks per second. So the higher the gravity level, yeah, the, the harder we fall, I guess the lower, which going negative, it says right here, you float upwards. Um, so we don't want a whole lot of negative. 
Uh, but yeah, that's apparently a thing. Now, apparently, if we don't like these, the things, the, the stats that are going on right here, I can actually re-roll this, I think, by just unenchanting this gear or just putting a low level enchant on a piece of gear. That could also work. Um, let's see if we just unenchant this gear. Will that fix our gravity or maybe make it worse? I, I don't want the gravity to be too, too negative. That would be pretty ridiculous. And uh, I don't know like how much makes you float. Um, this is pretty much the same. I, I don't think that changed any, honestly. Let's see, what other stats are we also getting here? So we get plus two armor and plus 11 armor. So this is actually really good. And if we go ahead and apply that, you can see it took some of our gem dust. This comes from dropping anvils on our useless gems. The gems that I don't want, for example, like this gem, I wouldn't want. So I would just toss it and I get gem dust out of it. But that's actually a pretty decent piece of gear. Now, what I can do is I can make some more gear. So I should be able to put this in here and start to build up like some sort of decent gear. That's like the overall goal. So taking a look at my gear here, this is what I've managed to get. So I have a socket available on this socket available there. I tried to get myself a socket because sockets are kind of important, um, but this has plus eight armor and two toughness on it with a uh, extra swim speed, but also it reduces some explosion damage which uh, is kind of useful, especially uh, against the little guys that throw little bombs at you. Uh, fire damage reduction on this, which is really great. Uh, as far as the stats go, just more swim speed in a socket. And this is plus five armor and toughness, which is nice. Some luck, uh, which helps fishing, I believe. Another socket, this reduces fire damage as well. And then of course we have this one, which uh, this item ignores 36% of durability damage, which is great because mending is not gonna be an easy task to achieve. Yeah, that is going to be a fun challenge just to try and get that because we can't re-roll villagers like we're used to. Uh, but this gives me plus 11 armor, which is fantastic. And we haven't even uh, equipped these or made these um, netherite. So overall, this is some pretty decent gear. As far as uh, the gravity goes, I, I feel it a little bit. It's not like incredibly noticeable, but I do feel it. Just the tiniest of bit, especially when falling. That's where I notice it the most. Um, now, time to get this thing enchanted. And I think we can put two protective enchants on it. So I think the way to go would probably be like fire protection, max fire protection if we can get it, and also just plain protection. Those would be probably the best things to have on our gear. So I think as far as enchantments go, this is pretty good. I'm, I'm thinking... The mana boost and mana regen, I probably could have buffed a little bit more, but um, this overall is going to be really nice. So this is going to have fire protection, which I think I can max out. I, I think I actually want to max out fire protection on this. There we go. That looks much better. And I think even on the mana boost, I think on these pieces, I should just probably max it out. So now I think this is some OP stuff right here. So this has protection and fire protection all across the board. And these all came from just enchanting those books with our hell shelves. So I'm probably going to feel a little bit of a boost here. And this didn't take very long to get set up either. I do need to put this into pump mode. And that's just going to pump that experience right to us. Like an IV of experience. Oh! Goodness, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> it broke her anvil. Good thing I have plenty more. So I can only imagine what this is going to be like once we have all of this gear on. Um, also, some things to note. Uh, critical resistance is on here that we had. I had a spare book laying around. Um, and something else out of the normal, I believe. This is projectile evasion, which is a thing that's on there. Um, so that's going to be kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure 100% how all this works. But I guess it, there's a small chance that it'll activate. But my goodness, is that some enchanted gear? Whew. Now, of course, it wouldn't be complete if we didn't upgrade it to netherite. Yes, yes, yes. Let's now take it all to netherite level. Oh boy, this is some sick looking gear. I will say that. And last but not least, the boots. There we go. Cover me in debris. And we are looking very swag. Now this is where choices get kind
complicated. And I think it's going to be very complicated for me because uh, I have four slots here that I can use. And these are the, probably the, some of the best gems that I have available. Looking at all the gems, there's not really anything else that I really want. I just want damage and potentially health. Um, so this is 70% draw speed for our bow, making our bow way more effective. And then right here we have bonus uh, base arrow damage. But I think I, I really don't want to boost my arrow damage. I think I just want to boost my total attack damage. That boosts it by 25%. We also have armor piercing, which would be nice. And we can increase our overall attack speed. Um, and we could potentially later on uh, with another piece of gear, maybe get ourselves some base overheal. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of variables here and we only have this many slots to work with. So I'm thinking maybe having a higher attack damage would help because I feel like I am not hitting these guys hard enough. So let's go ahead and try to socket some of these things. So I'm putting that 10% on there. And this is going to be the piercing. And hopefully that works. And then our 20% speed on our attack. And I don't know how much this is going to affect it. But yes, we do actually swing way faster now. It feels way faster than before. We're almost like a freaking Beyblade. Oh my God. So I still have yet to upgrade these bad boys, the swords, but I did enchant this sword and put Bane of Villagers on it, looting and sharpness and unbreaking, uh, which is kind of, kind of nice. So let's test it on our target dummy. We're producing about 20. Yeah, about 20 with this current sword, 22. Uh, DPS damage per second, which is not that bad. That's pretty darn good. So I'm guessing moment of truth for all of our gear. Let's see if we can't potentially like land up top here. Now that we have this and let's see how good we'll do. I mean, I, I want to see how, how great my damage reduction is. That's one of the main things, but let's see. Ha. Oh my gosh. I love how that initial attack doesn't even register sometimes. But now we're like taking no damage. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I say uh, things are things are looking a lot better. Now this, my friends, is definitely going to be a test. Let's put this to good use. Come on, my friends. Oh my gosh, that deals like absolutely no damage. I hate this effect that we get put on us, but hopefully our spell be gone will uh, we'll do that better. Let's see, are they attacking each other? Well, nothing but to get all these guys gone. And I just love that we're not taking really any damage from these like low level guys now, which I mean is was what I was expecting uh, that now that po Apotheosis is in here, like uh, Apotheosis can get cr incredibly powerful. So I have to say after that epic little trip there, we're powerful. We are definitely a lot more powerful. The only thing I need on these things is going to be mending. Mending seems like it's going to be a incredibly grueling task because of how villagers work in this. Not only do we have to get the trade scroll to be able to trade, which I think actually we already have the trade scroll, uh, if I believe, or we do have a quest. Shouldn't be too hard to get a quest, um, or we can even purchase the, the trade scroll. But we are going to have to probably set up multiple villagers at multiple villages until we find a villager that sells us a mending book. That's, we can't get it through normal means of enchanting. And with that, my friends, I am going to have to call it an episode. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And of course, if you did, give that subscribe button a good old smack, if you would, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification when I publish a new video just like this one. And guys, it is now time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to NM. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting this channel in one of the best ways possible. And if you guys are interested in joining the Discord as well, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join our amazing community of over 26,000, getting close to 27,000 members. 
It's quite a, quite an army we have there. So I hope you enjoyed. I, of course, will see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. You spin me like a top, uh, 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 like a top.